We are here at the world famous Yatabi Arena for round number five, the, the AOC, and we're here with a, a face and a name that everybody is very, very familiar with in the world of on road, the reigning world champion Ronald Volker. And Ronald, it's pretty awesome to be back here at Yatabi. Obviously, Yatabi has a, a big part of Yokomo and things like that, and you've been here many times, but it's it's always special to race here. Yeah, I love to be here um, every every year. And um Back then it was always like a historical place, um, we did like the Worlds in the year 2000, when I was not even running like a um, touring car. Um, yeah, it's, it's great to be here every year, it's a nice place, for sure. We always uh, close out the, the AOC here at Yatabi for ever since we started, and it always brings uh, a great turnout, and not only the pros like yourself, but a lot of average racers from all over the world come here, because Yatabi Arena is a place everybody has on their bucket list, as we say, uh, a place you just want to wanna be able to race at. It's, I think, similar to like Reedy Race for, for asphalt. Um, Yatabe, um, I know a lot of um, friends and uh, RC guys who want to come there for the first time whenever in their, in their life. And um, I think it's just awesome um, what they did and built and um, kept on running. It is. A, it's an amazing place. And they got, you know, everything you want from a drift track to off-road to the, the carpet tracker here. And as we are... Uh, we walk around and take a look at it here. It's, uh, you know, Yatabi has changed quite a bit through the years. It was asphalt, you know, and uh, unfortunately it had uh, the roof collapsed there a few years ago. And uh, now they, they moved everything into here and uh, the carpet. It's quite a challenge, though, for you guys right now because with all the 12-scale the cars we have and a mix of of the, the rubber tire and the 12-scale, it's, it's giving you guys a bit of a challenge, isn't it? I mean, it was actually a good idea for, um, for like the Japanese guys to, to make the layout last week or last weekend. So, um, because they're not able to, uh, to go here during the week, they have a layout set. But at the same time, it means there's a lot of grip out there. And um, I think, um, I thought it's going to be similar than last year, but I think the, um, for, for us in Turing Car, the tire compound, I think, a little bit softer than uh, previous year, and it makes it um, just more hard, harder for everybody uh, um, to get a setup right and to try it, uh, to just uh, have a clean run. But for me, it's a, it's a great challenge. It's just um, for sure more difficult than uh, last year. Yeah. What uh, with uh, the challenge of running the 12 scales with you guys is it? Uh, Obviously, the, the traction comes up, and you can feel it. It's it's a little yeah, bit stickier. Yeah. Do you have to do any different tire preparation than you would normally do, like we do back at ETS and things like that, when there's 12 scale running on the same layout and during the same event? The additive in the front doesn't save like for longer than like one or two minutes. I mean, um, in ETS, you, you put tire additive on at least like 10, 15 minutes. But um, yeah, um, as we have um, like traction rolling problems, like everybody, uh, we, for example, uh, glue the front sidewall. To at least make sure that um, you can, um, um, yeah, have a um, nice and consistent run. I think similar to the USA, um, where they also do that for permanent tracks. But I think even here, it's um, again different because uh, the carpet is very, very old, and it has everywhere grip. I think depends on on the layout, and um, um, yeah, basically, um, that's for sure tough. Also with the with the foam and uh, the two different additives they have, and yeah, it's <laughs> very sticky to walk on. Yeah, it is, and it's definitely got uh, it's got a lot of a lot of stickiness and a lot of bite, but uh, it's making for a good event for sure. And it's it's neat to see. I know this year there's a lot of a lot of first timers that have never uh, never been at the AOC that we see, you know, here enjoying it from you know just in the in the bottom group, you know, to the tops that always come and be part. And that must be a, a neat thing for you, you know, being you know arguably the, you know, the top touring car racer in the world right now. And uh, for them guys to come up and, and say hey and meet you and you know, take a picture and, or just come in and ask for advice. That's got to be a, a fun part of your job. Yeah, sure. Um, um, for most Japanese people, I mean, they cannot speak uh, very uh, good English or at least a little bit. And, um, but a picture is always uh, I mean, nice, a nice thing. Um, uh, also for me, it doesn't matter if it's uh, in Europe or, or somewhere else, it's always nice that um, people people um, appreciate uh, what, uh, what we are doing and um, that's very uh, cool for sure. Yeah, it makes you feel good when they come up and want to be, take a picture with the world champ, right? Yeah, it feels uh, pretty good, yeah. yeah. As we look at the layout here, Ronald, with uh, you know, with the layout obviously not as big as, as some of the, the carpet tracks we've raced at, at ETS and things like that, um, you got here a couple days early. Obviously, you do setup changes, but do you do a lot of um, changes in testing with speed controller settings and things like that? Um, 
um, especially um, indoors, um, I have a very good setting for, for like uh, every track. The, the sizes are always quite similar. You always have a long uh, back straight. And um, there are always some minor um, adjustments like drag brake or initial brake or a little bit more turbo. Um, but I have a very good basic setup and um, always good to go for like the first one because at ETS you, you don't get many uh, runs before yeah. Q1. <laughs> so you have to have a good uh, basic uh, in the beginning. What are some of the, the basics and you say you change, like drag brake. I always wondered how much drag brake you guys always run. Obviously the cars are, are so fast and things like that. What, uh, how much drag brake and things? Uh, this is also driver preference. I um, drive with a little bit less drag brake than others. Like for my speed control, it's like 9%. It's not exactly matching other speed controllers. Sure. Um, but I mostly run in the 9% while others prefer 12%, for example. And... Um, um, yeah, so mostly I recommend 12, but um, yeah, my basic setup, for example, indoor is 9%. But it also depends on the magnet you're running. I usually run uh, the standard magnet, which is like 12.5 millimeter. Mm -hmm. It's common for uh, many motors. And um, that's where I have my basic, like 12.5 millimeter, 9% drag brake. And sometimes we try like a small or a bigger magnet just to see feeling wise, brake wise, um, and especially outdoor. Outdoors, uh, of course, we test way more if the, the track is bigger or the temperature is more hot. So that's basically uh, what we're doing or what I'm doing. Talking about the big tracks, what is your feeling about the speed of modified touring car now? In the whole scheme of the, thinking of the hobby, not at the, the top level of racing, but you know something that always you know was a concern to me as an organizer, you know the speeds of the car, are speeds we've never seen before, and and many times the the speed of the car and the performance of the chassis, the technology is so far above tires and and some of the other things. Do you think the cars are too fast right now? Um, I mean, in like in every class, um, you want to have uh, something where you can go go fast, like. Um, like we have, but I think when um, electronics got um, got better over the years, like we get more top speed and uh, a better better range of feeling. Um, for example, the rubber tires um, um, I almost can't handle that high speed right. anymore. Exactly. Nothing against the rubber tires, but it's just um, almost uh, outsourcing it. I mean, um, um, it's more fun also for for average guy outdoors to to go like fast, but yeah, it doesn't make it easier um, when you have like. Um, tricky conditions or hot conditions and there are not many people out there, you won't have so much grip and then it's probably not as, as much fun as it uh, should be. Exactly. And that's something that I always, uh, I always worry about because, uh, you know, the technology has advanced so much for speed controllers and batteries and chassis, but the tire technology, granted the tires are great, but, you know, the speeds you guys are hitting. And when we do the, the big tracks, you know, outside, it's, it's, you know, it's amazing. And do you think it's just going to keep going, or do you think there needs to be some sort of limits thought about? I know modified is usually open, let it eat, you know, do whatever, but, you know, at what time is it going to, the balance really going to get out? I mean, every year I feel like we already reached the limit, and then we go <laughs> go higher again. I mean, I think in the beginning there was a time where everybody just wanted to have um, the most top speed. But then um, you also need to have a good range of feeling. Like, if, uh, if you have so much power... And um, the grip condition might be not so good. You don't want to have it like um, immediately, like the power. So you need to, to get also the, the feeling quite right. But yeah, difficult to say because um, I think we almost can't go any faster like, like it is now with, the, with the, the whole situation of car and tires. But yeah, I mean, um, the, the stock class are more popular with mm -hmm. the limited uh, electronics. And um, they're set up for, for close racing. Um, yeah, this is why I think they're especially indoors uh, more popular, to have like um, more fun and to use uh, the, the limited power rather than uh, going uh, modified indoors where you can easily um, break the car or just you're not able to, to use the power. You can, yeah. As, as, we, as we walk the track here, what, is, what are the challenges that you have? Obviously, you guys are going so fast here through the sweeper, and as we say, there's so much, uh, so much additive and traction out there. What uh, what are the things you have to remember each and every lap when you when you drive the circuit? I'm actually surprised that the track is so sticky. Even I walk um, offline, it's uh, it's very sticky. I mean, um, the most difficult part is probably um, uh, over here in the chicane. Um, I mean, we go pretty fast. I don't know how much 70, 80 uh, end of straight. Um, 
but the curves are, are forgiving. Like um, you can slightly touch them, you don't, you don't fly into the wall. But um, basically, um, there's high grip everywhere, and um, the tricky part is uh, the chicane over there um, because it's like you can you can almost you can almost go straight, but actually you cannot. <laughs> and this makes room for like improvement on for in terms of lap times. Um, it was easy to to steal or gain a tenth in that section, and I struggled um, in uh, I think Q1 and Q2 uh, that part actually. Like I lost a little bit, little bit of time because I went too aggressive. But um, yeah, this is a, at least a key factor for this track. Pretty tough competition right now. I mean, obviously you're right now after the first couple of qualifiers, you're on top. But uh, Alex and uh, Akio and all the guys. I mean, that's, there's some of these Japanese guys. They're they're so fast. Yeah. I'm, uh, Every year I'm also wondering um, about uh, the new Japanese generations coming up um, because uh, for a couple of years before it uh, seemed to be like always the same guys like Naoto but now there are um, a lot of more uh, guys coming up and um, yeah it's, it's tough here the track is difficult and um, uh, I was very happy with my uh, third qualifier um, the car was uh, on point so I was able to to have a decent gap but um, yeah every day the track condition could uh, slightly change, and this is probably a uh, thing we need to need to see for tomorrow because we start pretty late tomorrow. So, have to see how the track condition uh, will be. Absolutely, and kind of the final thing I want to want to hit you up with now, as we're in November, you pretty much got a year under your belt as the reigning world champ. You know, I've been friends for for quite a while, and we watched you grow and and go through the ranks. But as we look back now, a year of being called the world champ, what is what has this year been in, in your mind, you know, from obviously the, the joy and elation from when you win to now it's, you know, a year in. What is uh, what has the past year been for you? I mean, this is always a, the, the goal I wanted to have in my life and when I was, when I was young and a kid. Um, yeah, the, um, I thought um, if I'm going to be a world champion, I would be like maybe less motivated or less, less eager or just, uh, yeah, I don't know, less motivated, like I said, but... Um, I still want to do the best at every race. It doesn't matter where and uh, when. Uh, so that um, term it didn't change, uh, which is, I think, uh, glad for myself and, um, and for everything um, I'm doing. So I'm still kind of um, want uh, to not only to try to defend my title next time, also to, to win again uh, the ETS uh, series, which is always difficult um, after the first one. Yeah. round. Well, we appreciate you taking a few minutes with us and uh, just talking to us about the event and things here at uh, the world famous Yatabi Arena. It's always great to chat with Ronald. He's uh, at the top of the game, no question, but he still remembers he's uh, just one of the guys. He's always helping people when, when they come up to help, and it's uh, a great trait of Ronald and shows what kind of a great guy he is. So uh, appreciate you taking a few minutes to uh, chat with us here at round number five, closing out the AOC here at the world famous Yatabi Arena.